For this demonstration, I will use this capacitor bank. It has a capacity of 1900 microfarads at 600 volts. This capacitor has a total energy stored of 640 joules. For comparison, a this size battery like this has a total energy of 75,000 joules. It is much more than the energy in this capacitor. However, the difference is important. If we put this battery in short circuit, all the energy in the battery will be released in a period of several minutes. However, if we put the capacitor in short circuit, all the energy will be released in a fraction of a second. Therefore, the power delivered by the capacitor will be much more larger than the power that this battery can give us. And now we will see the results of that power. I have connected the capacitor to this high voltage power supply and the multimeter to read the voltage. After charging the capacitor, I will short circuit the terminals with this piece of aluminum sheet. Let's charge first to 100 volts approximately. Now let's see at 200 volts. And now 400 volts. Wow. Here you can see the holes left by the discharge. The current that passes through the aluminum is very high more than 100 amps. The material gets very hot above 1000 degrees Fahrenheit and is vaporized by the discharge. Let's now try with a piece of copper wire. I will now charge the capacitor to 400 volts and place the wire between its terminals. We can see that the wire has disappeared, only some dust remains. The tremendous flow of current has vaporized the metal. You may ask if this is useful in any way. Well, this method was invented as a detonator of nuclear weapons in the Manhattan Project at Los Alamos National Laboratory. It is also used as a light source and in the production of nanoparticles. In a much more larger scale, the Zeta machine at the Sandia National Labs uses the same technique of an instantaneous discharge of high voltage capacitors in the research of nuclear fusion.